November is Alzheimer's Awareness Month, and there is a new push on to both raise awareness and raise funds for the cure. And my next two guests, they're here to talk about what they're doing on both fronts. Ken Carrison, he is the CEO and president of Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research Foundation. And Dr. Mark Flageolet is an assistant research professor at the Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research at Rockefeller University. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having us, and thank you for addressing this uh, devastating disease. And, uh, Doctor, I'll start with you in that the numbers have skyrocketed for those that are afflicted by this. And I'm curious, is that it's just been diagnosed a lot better in recent years, or that the numbers themselves about people afflicted with Alzheimer's have gone through the roof as well? What can you attribute to how many people have it compared to, let's say, a generation ago? Yes, so it's a, it's a combination of factors, but there is definitely many, many more patients right now. We consider usually about 5.2 million just in the U.S., about 30 million worldwide, and we, we estimate that these numbers will double by 2050 if nothing changes. Of course, we are, we are diagnosed, diagnosing it uh, easily, but we also have people that are living longer and longer. So all together, we are definitely having more and more patients. And there's an important breakthrough to get to in a moment. But Ken, I, I want to talk to you because it seems that all of us know someone with Alzheimer's. And like many, this foundation that you're attached with, uh, they began out of a personal story. Talk about uh, Zachary Fisher in 1995, uh, about how this thing all began. Well, I, I knew Zachary and his wife, uh, Elizabeth, for many years. Um, and I knew her when she would uh, dance on the dance floor and she would have... Uh, she would play bridge, and it was uh, she, she would be living the regular life. Um, and slowly, but slowly, um, uh, she uh, couldn't do anything. Um, and uh, so this is why I am uh, working diligently to give funds to find a cure uh, for Alzheimer's. Um, at the end, Mrs. Fisher couldn't walk. Uh, she couldn't talk. Um, and it was uh, devastating um, to me in my heart and uh, devastating to everyone around her. There are some hopeful signs, uh, aren't there, Doctor? And talk about, if you could, um, for our audience, both the breakthrough that you've happened with a pathway and, and if people hear the term wave one, what that really means. Yes, so in terms of breakthrough, we had, we had several lately. And the latest one is, is a protein called wave one, which is actually regulating a small compound that is toxic and called A-beta. A-beta is this compound that, by accumulating, will end up forming amyloid plaques. And this is today the main hypothesis of the disease. So those plaques are interfering with the, with the way uh, nerve cells are talking to each other, the way they communicate. So the game here is to try to reduce as much as possible the burden of plaques. And by doing that, we are trying to target the toxic compound and the, the, the breakthrough that we, we, we just had about wave one. So it's a new possibility, it's a new pathway um, to target these, these toxic peptides, reduce it, and hopefully improve memory loss. Um, in prepping for the interview, I went to, to your organization's website, alzinfo.org, and we've put it on the screen for our audience. Learned a lot about it, and we'll get into in a second how people can help, but also Tell people about some of the things from warning signs to how far or how far away we think we may be from a cure. Give a kind of a state of the state, if you will, uh, of this disease. It's really, really hard to predict when the cure will be available just because we never know when the next breakthrough will, will come in. But in terms of treatments, there are, there are many, many drugs that are out there now in clinical trials, and I, I'm quite optimistic. I, I, I like to say that we sort of came out of the dark ages and we are now in a, in a renaissance period about this this whole way we are considering clinical trials and hopefully that will be much more efficient and, and, and the patients will soon see the, the fruits of, of this research. And Kent, you have some of the, the best minds on this, including a Nobel laureate that between the Rockefeller University and NY Langone, NYU Langone, uh, tell people about where the money goes, how it was integral in this breakthrough they just said, but how people can help here um, to obviously cure this terrible disease. So the, the difference between what NIH supports 
and what we support is NIH won't support anything um, until it becomes a mature experiment or a mature uh, 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 discovery. Um, what we do is uh, at the Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research Foundation is we raise funds, 85 percent of the money that we raise annually goes to um, our program expenses, which makes us squarely different than any other Alzheimer's Foundation out there. Um, and we support novel ideas. So when Mark or Dr. Paul Greengard, Nobel laureate, as you mentioned, Richard, um, comes up with an idea that might create wave one or might create uh, some other uh, discovery, we support it until it, uh, it, it comes to fruition. So it might not be something that would be supported um, otherwise, if it weren't for the Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research. And we also, uh, you know, we are part of uh, the cure, care, and cause of, um, of Alzheimer's. So we not only have an extensive website, and thank you for mentioning that, Richard, but we also have a magazine called Preserving Your Memory, and we support Dr. Barry Reisberg at, uh, at the NYU Lagone Medical Center, and we also support the Karolinska Institute uh, in Sweden. Before I let you go, though, Ken, on the other side of the break, we're going to introduce our audience uh, to a person who's going through Alzheimer's right now, and he puts a real human face on it, but it's not just the person suffering with this, is it? It's the families, it's the loved ones, and the helplessness so many people have in seeing the person they knew kind of fade away before their eyes, right? Absolutely. This disease costs our country $226 billion a year, and it's projected that by 2050 it's going to cost our, our country $1.1 trillion annually. So it's not <clears throat> only the, the patient, it's the family and the core of America, and we have to uh, figure out how um, to fund the novel and um, very successful research that uh, Dr. Greengard and Dr. Mark are doing. Well, we put again the, the website's URL right on the bottom of the screen so people can check it out for themselves. Kent, doctor, I certainly appreciate a few minutes. And as I said, on the other side of the break, everyone, the best selling author who tells his personal story about battling Alzheimer's and how he's not letting it beat him, both compelling and uplifting.